This is a video that I absolutely enjoy filming. I am a floral girl at heart, especially as I get into the second half of my life here. I'm approaching 50 and florals are squarely in my wheelhouse, friends. I have loved florals for a long time, especially as I moved further into my adult years and have collected probably way too many florals, more than I'll ever wear in my entire lifetime. But oh my gosh, do I enjoy having them, sniffing them, coming by, spritzing them. This is the category that my husband loves the most on me. So they often make it into date night as date night fragrances. I pulled my top 10. You know how hard that was? Oh my God, so difficult. My top 10 as of today, as of today. If you ask me next month, maybe the list will be different. But these are some of my absolute favorites that at least as of now, I feel like are so quintessential so important, so foundational and critical to my floral collection that I wanted to share them with you. I will start with my scent of the day, which is, I, you know, I've heard about this fragrance being one of the most beautiful floral fragrances in all of the world. And I, I just, I had to get my nose on it. And I saw it like Eureka, serendipitously. I saw it for sale at the Derm store online and it was 20% off. So yeah, oh, that was a no brainer for me. I bet this is called something other than what I'm going to pronounce it, but it's Kai. That's what we're going with. I bet someone's going to say, no, it's K or Kai or something. Kai. We'll go with Kai for today. <laughs> and this is the Eau de Parfum. It comes in an oil form. And you know what? There is a lotion. I'm not a big lotion girl or I would snatch that up. There's also a shampoo and conditioner that I'm strongly thinking of getting in a linen spray. So I ordered this, came home sprayed it and immediately understood why people were so obsessed with this fragrance and it is one of the most realistic nearly indolic when you think about a floral being indolic imagine a flower that has bloomed and it's past like maybe its brightest stage and it's on the end of the flower life where it's going to start to decay a little bit and maybe there are some of those odors coming off of the scent that feel just a little bit like right short of being stinky, but not quite yet. You're still sniffing it and enjoying it. That to me is what indolic is like. And when you get really indolic is when the flower is on the wilting end and it starts to smell like it's decaying. That's not the type of indolic I'm talking about. I'm talking about the like right at prime or past its prime type of indolic scent here. It's supposed to be a white gardenia and other white florals. Those are the only notes listed for this. My husband said this smells like straight honeysuckle to him. I get that. It's almost like for me, a combination of honeysuckle and white gardenia and maybe what magnolia smells like combined with something even a little bit creamy, like an alang alang note may lend to flowers, to a flower bunch or to a floral composition. This is very, very realistic. If you don't want to smell like straight up flowers and i'm talking about lush flowers this isn't a bright girly young wear your tutu and have ballet slippers on flowers <laughs> i'm talking about like a garden that is fully bloomed and it's the heat of summer and the the wafts of floral scents are mixing with the humidity in the air and it's just like slapping you in the face it's that kind I really do think it's beautiful. Someone described this as what the smell of Hawaiian surfer girls probably smells like. I get that. Like it smells like a full on lay that you might put around your, have put around your neck when you, you know, get off of the plane on a tropical island. It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. Decently lasting, nicely projecting, not an all day wear. For me, this isn't one that goes well into the, the evening hours. Worth every penny. It's sitting out on the Derm store at $84. I ended up with 20% off of that, but I would purchase this even for $84. Not a problem at all. Gorgeous. I don't know exactly how to pronounce the next one, so I'll put the name up here. I'm going to guess it's Petale. Do we say the S or not? Let me know in the comments, my French speaking friends. This is from Shantakai. I have grown enamored of another fragrance from this line called Frangipani that I purchased last summer and that I really, really enjoy. A little bit short-lived, but an absolutely gorgeous Frangipani fragrance for summertime. This one reminds me more of spring, and I am on the hunt for Le Wild from this line, which has been out of stock in a lot of places for a long time. I'm on the notification list for that one on the Shantakai website, but Let's just take a moment for the artistry of the bottle. I mean, maybe one could argue that there are some disproportional aspects of it. We're not here to talk about bottles, but I appreciate a nice bottle. The point being that there's some thought that went into this bottle. I mean, the crystal ball 
disco ball type of thing happening up here maybe it's questionable <laughs> but the you know frosted wrap around here i think is really a neat addition so what really attracted me to this fragrance was the promise that it smelled like fresh gardenia or one of the most realistic gardenia scents i've smelled a lot including i think there's one in the chanel lay exclusive line that i think is really nice also and some i have lots of gardenias but this one really does stand out to me as gardenia forward it's not a sola flower gardenia though and i want to be clear about that it does have other florals there's jasmine and tuberose and there's also a nice very soft woody aspect in the deep background of this that i think gives this some backbone some backbone i would say this is slightly musky too but definitely definitely a gorgeous white floral in fact i probably forgot to say at the top of the video that these are mostly white floral heavy the fragrances that i'm going to talk about today there's an exception or two but i'm a white floral gal now i will be of course talking about your more creamy yellow florals and so forth in the summertime as we get into that season but for spring i'm thinking of fresh gardens that will be around me the kind of flowers that bloom here oh, it's just, just so beautiful very elegant lovely mature this is an absolutely mature fragrance Kai, even though it's been associated with like Hawaiian surfer girls, um, I do think it's a little bit more on the mature side. I could totally see young ladies and gentlemen pulling this off as well. But this one for sure, for sure is a much more mature, elegant, refined fragrance. This is like the ladies that lunch <laughs> version of Gardenia. Beautiful. Um, and if y'all see La Wild sold anywhere, not overseas. I'm not willing to do overseas shopping again. I had a a little bit of a bad experience with that earlier last year and would like to avoid that. But if you, you see a retailer in the States that sells it, let me know. I'm willing to purchase it. I don't want to purchase it secondhand. In fact, I'm a little bit shy about purchasing florals secondhand because for me, I really want to make sure that those are the fragrances that have been stored the best if I'm going to buy them secondhand. And you just can't guarantee that, you know, through a seller online. By the way, these are all so beautiful to me that it would be almost impossible to rank them. So these are in no particular order. I am saving my tuberose forward fragrances for the end, as I know that tends to be a note that only a smaller portion of us more daring floral wearers really enjoy. So I've got four that are maybe tuberose forward. No, they are tuberose <laughs> forward fragrances at the end. This next one is in one of the kitschiest. Maybe some people would think it's super gaudy. So we have to look past that yeah i know <laughs> this sort of really crazy looking argyle pattern here on the front i don't even know what that's about y'all or this whatever this is bond number nine and this is central park west please get past the packaging here i actually like how weird it is because it reminds me of the <laughs> uniqueness of each bond number nine bottle but you know let's get real this is maybe one of the worst patterns on a anyway we're not here to talk about that but i do want to mention it I love that this is one of the most bright, effervescent white florals that is in my collection and is still on the grown side, grown and sexy. Very spring-like, not heavy at all. I love that it's a nice mix of a lot of different white florals, gardenia and tuberose, and there's a lang a lang, there's yellow florals in this fragrance as well. Definitely white floral forward. And it has almost like a creamy sweetness along with this very, very thin strand of greenness in the back of the fragrance and like this soft, creamy, powdery woodiness as a base on which the florals rest. This is neat. This is happy. This is carefree, but definitely grown and sexy still. You could wear this to church. You could wear this out to dinner. You could have this as a wedding scent. This would make one of the prettiest wedding scents ever so lovely so lovely light wearing although substantial you know you put it on you have this sort of lightness of being kind of thing while it being a substantial white floral with some like i said creaminess from the yellow florals and all of, all of that the backbone from the slight like musky powdery woodiness very very soft in the background white floral forward happy i mean it's called central park west so i imagine a very sunny day in new york where ladies have dressed to the nines and they are headed off for a beautiful brunch, a beautiful early dinner, maybe in the afternoon. And they're strolling the streets with bright pastel colors on and these gorgeous florals wafting in the air off of their skin. That's what this reminds me of. This is glorious. One of the most well-respected, loved, 
beloved white florals out on the market right now is Honor Woman from Amouage in this gorgeous bottle. Another one that would make an absolutely glorious wedding scent if you had a spring or summer wedding. And this has the amazing trifecta of jasmine and gardenia and tuberose together. Usually when I have those three notes in a fragrance, it is one of the most glorious white florals like of all time, which this is. It has a little bit of tartness in it, a slight hint of greenness. There's also a nice dose of lily of the valley in the fragrance, which tends to be a soapier white floral. So there's this light brightness. It sits a little bit sort of higher in the air than some of the heavier fragrances that I'll talk about here in a minute. So it's light and bright and somewhat airy, although it has a lot of presence and substance and base to it as well at the same time. Kind of an interesting juxtaposition of what could be perceived as a serious white floral with something that is very squarely a spring, early summer, fantastic, fantastic white floral for across age groups. I could see young ladies wearing this. I think I've talked about it as, as being mature in the past, but I'm changing my mind a little bit, whereas... This one from Chantecaille is really very sort of a grown up mature fragrance. This maybe is more light and bright, definitely not youthful and flirty. Not that. There are some florals that are in that direction. This is very much a fully matured white floral without being stuffy. I just think this is elegant, lovely, crowd pleasing. It even is like sort of creamy. The base of it is sort of like a creamy white floral, almost like the creaminess that you get in Love Tuberose from this line, except that this is a more rounded, more complex floral fragrance than Love Tuberose is, which is tuberose dominant. Oh, oh, I don't know if you can get better than this for a well-rounded white floral that deserves to be decorated. Like If you've been wine tasting and you looked at the wine shelves that the winery has, they'll put medals around their wine bottles for wines that have won awards through the years. This one deserves high decoration, lots of medals on it. I'm cheating with the next one a little bit because I, I think it's probably more of a fruity floral, but the florals in it stand out more to me than the fruits. I think the fruit are nice accompaniments to the florals and the fragrance. This is an inexpensive fragrance. By the way, did I mention everything will be linked below? So be sure to check out those links if you're interested in, in shopping for any of these. I don't tell people often that they have to go check something out. But if you like a fruity floral, if you like a sweet floral in general, I feel like this is a must have and a must try. This is from Ise Miyake and it is the Pure Nectar Eau de Parfum. The way that you know you're getting this because there are a lot of flankers in this line that have different designs is the bottle is like a clear ombre effect with the bronzy, almost coppery bottom. Okay, so make sure that that is what you're getting and that there aren't any floral patterns on it at all. At all. I haven't tried all of those others. I think I did try one other, but this is the one that I truly fell in love with. And here's what I absolutely adore about this fragrance. It is delicious to the nines. It has a lovely pear note in the opening and through the mid, a real light touch of something else sweet. The notes say honey. I don't know that I pick up honey specifically, but I definitely pick up something a little bit like juicy sweet. And I absolutely adore, adore the rose peony combination in this fragrance. <sighs> And I love that it has that same aquatic and like airy ozonic thing that the original Issei Miyake Lodise has. It has a little bit of that DNA. This is masterpiece status. Did I put this in my masterpiece fragrance video recently? If I didn't, it should have been. This, this is a toe curler. I got a toe curlers video coming up for you. Stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> toe curlers, fragrances that just make your eyes roll in the back of your head and your toes curl. And you just feel like they are just exquisite. They're divine for what they are. This is wonderful. Wonderful. Husband loves this on me. Raves. Kids love it on me. It is just so good. There's nothing about this fragrance that I would change. It's light. It's bright. It's fresh. It's a little fruity, but mostly floral. And it's those bright, bright, really fresh smelling florals. Nothing in Dolik here at all. Nothing. Nothing. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Beautiful fragrance. Can't recommend this enough. Nicely lasting, nicely projecting. And I think you can get this on Joma Shop for, is it even under $50? All linked below. In the same family as this, but without the sweet fruitiness, because this does have some sweetness that I can't say enough good things about this. But in the same family, maybe a little bit more of a structured, high-rise condo version of this if this is the sweet country girl next door 
Y'all, if you haven't gotten your nose on this, what are you waiting for? This is Magnolia Rosé from the Maison Lancome line. One of the few that are left from this line. A lot of them have been discontinued. Absolutely gorgeous line of fragrances. I didn't smell a stinker that I remember in the entire bunch of this line, but this one is one that actually grew on me. When I first purchased this, I was like, I guess it's okay. Put it on my shelf, came back to wear it one day and went, whoa, this is really magnificent and beautiful. Magnolia Rosé. So very simple notes that are highlighted for you. Certainly there are always other notes that are not shown on Fragrantica or other websites, right? But what the perfumer here wanted you to notice, Magnolia rose and musk i love 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 how soft and feminine but powerful this is this is a very projecting fragrance a very long lasting fragrance in fact don't overspray this because it's the kind of fragrance fragrance that you will go nose blind to and you'll swear that didn't last long and no one smelled it on me no ma'am this is one that will stay with you <laughs> it will stay close to you and protect you the entire day it is a strong fragrance very very strong very long lasting bright fresh almost aquatic feeling almost aquatic feeling in fact i'm just going to go ahead and say that this has this sort of watery aquatic nature to it that is captivating spellbinding even and a soft bed of musk the musk is very very soft it's really just sort of a foundation upon which the rose magnolia combination just shines highly feminine ageless ageless i could see young ladies wearing this i could see our middle aged mamas and i could see our more mature into later in life really enjoying this fragrance rocking it smelling like their best womanly feminine selves this is an intense color pink like my lipstick i would say that if this were a color it's almost the color of my lipstick boom there you go. <laughs> In fact, my lipstick today, because sometimes people ask and I always forget, it's called Berry Pop. This is from Natasha Denona. Look at that. Look, hello. Look at, look at that color. Look at that. Oh, look at it. We ain't here to talk about makeup. We're here to talk about this. And this is the color of a deep, beautiful pink, but not so pink that it's hot pink, not so pink that it's almost red. This is a light, bright, fun pink color. Very, very juicy floral. Ooh, love this. Now, friends, we are going to go squarely into tuberose territory. I think I'm going to end with my favorite of the bunch. So let me start off with this one. And the reason that I am talking about this fragrance, let me tell you all what this is called. <laughs> this is from Nasomato, and this is Narcotic V or Narcotic Venus. So for all of my friends out there who have been missing Michael, the original Michael from Michael Kors, not the newly reformulated one. I don't even know if that one is available on the market. I know it's available on gray sites, but the, the old school Michael that came out in the year 2000, remember that one? It was super strong for its time period. It was like the room filler. If you wanted to be counted among the adult women, <laughs> that was the fragrance that you purchased and tried to rock. And I say that because I was young at that time. I had just graduated from college a few years before that. And that Michael came out on the market and I remember some of my teacher friends buying it and me being like, whoa, that's a strong one because I was like into light citrus. I was wearing like Gap Grass and Victoria's Secret Scents and all of that at that time. And Michael just seemed so mature, but beautiful, undoubtedly beautiful. Anyway, if you're missing that fragrance, get yourself Narcotic V. It reminds me so much of that. I wouldn't say they're exact twins. I would say they're super duper close. This is a tuberose forward fragrance, friends. I don't even know what else to tell you about it. It's a bright tuberose, but it's long lasting. It's got presence. It's really, really great. I don't love these bottles. What design team comes up with this? Why is this a good idea? I don't know. <laughs> but this fragrance is magnificent. If you're a tuberose lover, this is sort of a must have in your collection or Michael. They're, they're pretty similar. This is also in the same neighborhood of like Florence from Toka. It doesn't have the like wispy muskiness, the, the lightness of that. This is a little bit more of a serious tuberose, but man, so, so pretty, so pretty. Big winner. So the tuberose in this next one is notable also, but it's maybe not quite as tuberose heavy or forward or solar flower-ish as Narcotic Venus. I just adore this bottle. I love the name of it. I love the feeling of this bottle. This is Moon Carnival. Lovely tuberose. Also has other white florals to maybe soften up that, that tuberose hit 
that you might get with like narcotic venus there's a marshmallow note that gives this this light wispiness a little bit of citrus and a soft maybe like vanillic powderiness from tonka bean i like that this is on the softer end for those of you that want to dip your toes in tuberose territory but you don't want something quite as strong as narcotic v or the other two that i'm going to talk about this might be a good sort of intermediate fragrance to, to try out. I wouldn't say it's beginner. I'd say it's intermediate to try out. It's a beautiful fragrance, very nice wearing, inviting. There's something like fairy-like about it. And in terms of the softness and the marshmallow aspects, the sort of fluffy, pillowy aspects of this fragrance are delightful. Really easy wearing, easy wearing fragrance, uh, not overpowering like the next two that I'm going to talk about. I'll say with this one, you're probably going to get a good moderate longevity and a nice, maybe more intimate scent bubble once it settles down. This is not beast mode by any means, but it is a very huggable fragrance that gives you this sort of soft, like I said, um, floral fairy type of feeling. And then among my favorite tuberoses, so friends, I, I didn't talk about some of the florals that I usually talk about. So we didn't hear about Alien, Amarige, Praka, all of those kinds of real powerhouse fragrances of the past. I wanted to bring maybe a little bit of a different selection to you. This one I have talked about quite a bit, but maybe not recently. And it's because the bottle just throws me off. This is called Wild Python from Mancera. <laughs> I don't love this bottle. It, we talked about this being like the Peggy Bundy bottle in my collection <laughs> with the high Texas hair and like the cigarette hanging out of her mouth and the tight jeans. So, but the fragrance inside is one of the most intoxicating tuberose concoctions like of all time ever. This comes on really, really strong with this punch of a really bright, creamy tuberose almost with this lovely sweetness from a peach osmanthus combination. I can't say that it smells really peachy to me. I can say that it, it smells a bright, almost like a melony, fruity kind of sweetness delightful absolutely delightful in the opening as it settles down you still get a lot of that tuberose the fruity aspects just mellow out into a nice sweet undertone and there's a beautiful almost like muskiness along with a nice deep vanilla base this is a glorious fragrance absolutely sexy very very appealing very appealing so you know if you if you want to attract if you want to attract someone this might be the one this might be the one. This will have the, you know, this is the milkshake that brings the boys to the yard kind of a thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Elegant, beautiful. I would not hesitate to wear this to a winter wedding, for example, or a winter bride would smell absolutely amazing in this, in the coolness of, well, fall and winter as well. Heck, you can wear this in the summer, but I'm saying it is a strong, loud and proud, <laughs> sweet tuberose with vanilla as a base, some muskiness. It is just, it's fan freaking tastic and worth every dollar. And then I leave this one for last because it is the priciest, usually in any bunch of fragrances that I'm talking about. Uh, recently has shown up on some discount sites in the $300 range, and even that is pricey. Retail, this is, I think, over $800. The presentation that it comes with is like something else. It comes in a vial, a chamber, a chamber of water in this glorious box with this light. And it's just like this whole ostentatious, almost circus-like presentation. But it is probably right now, maybe my favorite tuberose in my entire collection today and has been for the start of 2024 and the end of 2023. This is Atlantide from Tiziana Terenzi in the Sea Star bottle. So this is a Sea Star uh, draped over it. And it has the little window to tell you how much you've used. Friends, when you first spray this, it reminds me of the color emerald green. I've said that before in other videos because it smells luscious, really just lush, <laughs> like a lush tropical garden after a rainstorm with a whole heaping ton of delicious, sweet greenery around and bubblegum. And I love the combination of that. Oh my gosh, it is just the most intoxicating scent ever. I love wearing this. It makes me feel very uplifted. I have to say the bottle is part of the experience for me here. I have to look past the bottle with this experience here, this one. <laughs> I have to look past the bottle for this experience. This bottle is part of the experience. This is a very regal, like royal, royal smelling tuberose fragrance. Whatever royal smells like. You know what this reminds me of? Oh my gosh, it just dawned on me. It's like if the new Herba Gold from Zerzhov 
met the most glorious white tropical garden in a lush green setting. Like let's talk about like Hawaii, a Hawaiian island after the rain. Stop playing with me. This is absolutely amazing. I can't get enough of this. I'm trying not to wear this as frequently as I want to. My husband loves this on me. He wants me to reach for this all the time. He is just so enamored with this. So enamored. One of the most elegant fragrances. I just can't speak highly enough about it. I feel bad talking about it because of the price tag. It's worth the price tag though. It's worth it. It's so good if you're a floral lover. It's so good if you're specifically a tuberose lover. If you like a green, fresh tuberose, this like to me blows carnal flower out of the water. And I like carnal flower by Frederick Mall. This maybe even tops Fraca. And I love that fragrance. I've loved that for years. Definitely tops Michael. And I love Michael. I've loved that for years. This is it. This is it. This is the pinnacle for me. That's it. I don't even know what else to say. I'm just going to end the video on this note. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Let me know what you think about these fragrances. And friends, let me know what your favorite white floral is in the comments. Share, share. We want to smell them all. We want to smell them all. Enjoy them all. Take care. Love you guys.